I want to make sure though that I give you a formal introduction because tonight we have the pleasure of being joined by a legend, a hip hop legend, Just Ice, aka Sir Vicious, aka the Desolate One, aka the original gangster hip hop. Appreciate you, bro. Originally from the Bronx. Yeah, um, yeah. Do a die, you know. But yo, as I was doing some research for this interview, one thing I came across, and tell me if it's true that are you originally from Brooklyn, but then moved to the Bronx? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from Fort Greene. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. See, I lived in Fort Greene, but my grandmother in the late 70s, she lived um on 116th Street, right down the block from the mosque. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right down the block. So we used to always see um Malcolm X. We used to always see Elijah Muhammad. We used to always oh, because the mosque was right the, the next corner across the street from my house mm. from that block. So and after she moved from there, that's when she moved to Castle Hill in the Bronx. Okay. Okay. In the late 70s. Mm. I mean, Castle Hill wasn't even it wasn't even finished being built when she moved there. They were still building it. Damn. Mm. So um, that's the that's that's the transition from Brooklyn mm. to the Bronx. So primarily, you, I mean, would you say it's fair to say that you primarily grew up in the Bronx? No, I, no, no, it was half and half. Trust me, half trust half? me, it was half and trust me. Sometimes <laughs> it was more Brooklyn. So at the end, it was way more Brooklyn. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, was, so, so, tell us a little bit about like your experience in terms of like your upbringing. What was it like? Rough dogs. It was rough. I had to fight every day in school. Shit. <laughs> my, and, my, and that's fucked up because my mom's the teacher at some of those schools. <laughs> you know um, what I'm saying? So it, it wasn't nothing easy coming up, man. It wasn't nothing easy. It ain't nothing mm. like these motherfuckers growing up today. Nothing like it. Mm. Uh, nothing like it. I can give you one prime example. Nowadays, kids want to stay in the house and do a little electronic thing, right? My mom's kicked you out the house. Yep. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Don't cross the street. Don't go nowhere far. Be back upstairs before the fucking before it gets dark, yeah. which means nine o'clock. Yeah, you know, eight fifty at eight fifty nine. We on our way upstairs because if we come in at nine or one, we in trouble. Word. The Yo, you, you know what the you know what the difference is too as a result of going outside. Like I think that back in the days, like you know, older generations had better social skills. Also, like they knew what it meant to actually have to engage somebody to make a friend. Like right now, engagement is via social media. Like. You know, you a friend, people associate a friend with clicking on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is, rather than actually having to engage a person in person and the develop art, friendship. The, the art of conversation has been lost. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, yeah. nowadays it's more or less emojis or a text or email or something like that. You know, I, I mean, personally, I really don't fuck around too much on social media, mm -hmm. you know, and if I do go, if I do, Go on Facebook. I don't use my name. <laughs> <laughs> I go by a different name. So, you know, because to me, I mean, that just doesn't appeal to me, you mm. know, to get on a damn computer and just stay on there for hours. I'm not going to have these people I probably wouldn't even like if I met them. Yeah, no, that's true. But yeah, isn't it you know? interesting that that technology is designed to bring us closer together, but has really driven people further apart? I mean, yeah, because everybody want to be isolated now. Yeah, everybody wants to be isolated. A lot of people use COVID for that. A lot of people was like, "Damn, I'm glad COVID came. Now you gotta go next <laughs> month." <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? And after COVID left, well, COVID never left because in New York, that shit is still floating around in Florida, it's still floating around. Mm -hmm. But down, that's 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 the um, that's the reason why now. That's the then I said, "Oh, I don't want to. It's not that I don't want to be with you. I don't want to see you." About, 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 I'm just doing this, so I'm just doing that, or I'm just doing this. But in all reality, I don't want to come near your ass. <laughs> you know the funny thing about that, about COVID, is don't you feel like like sometimes people should have been keeping their distance to begin with? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, common sense, because I, yeah. I mean, I was always this type of motherfucker. As far as my hand could go out, that's as far as you stay the fuck away from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When yeah. I'm talking to somebody, this is my safe distance. Don't come into that circle. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's before COVID. Yeah. Right. You know, that's that, before COVID. That shit cultural right. though. You know that shit cultural. Hey, your brothers don't want motherfuckers standing close to them. Nah. <laughs> that space is reserved for intimate yeah, close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, seriously, man. Whether it could be weather related because it's too hot, a motherfucker <laughs> just be aggravated. 
<laughs> don't stand close to me. For real. Just if you want to talk, stay the fuck over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit is cultural. Yo, so you you were known as the original gangster of hip hop. How did, how'd you end up um getting that moniker and were you cool with it? Yeah, because I didn't really I didn't say that about myself. I mean, the record was the original gangster of hip hop because back then when I first started back in 86, 85, 86, wasn't nobody talking about gangster shit. Mm. nobody in California no NWA no Ice Cube none of them didn't even know about them we didn't even know about them niggas back then mm-hmm. and if we did it was just a glimpse you was you know Bumpy I mean? Knuckles before Bumpy Knuckles <laughs> yeah I, I did it yeah that's my dude too Big Up Bumpy that's my dude <laughs> you know what I'm saying so when I, I I I think it was from the media because I never said I'm the gangster of hip hop that came from the record companies mm. and the people because nobody was rhyming like that. Right. And mm. I don't I don't know if they took it as stories, but I would just say life experiences, you know, because mm. that's one thing I'll never do is say something on a record that I haven't experienced. OK, mm. I'm not a storyteller from that point of view, from the outside looking in. I'm a storyteller from the motherfucker that happened to. Right. <laughs> All right, that makes sense. It makes perfect sense, man. You know, that's a, so I guess that name or moniker, the gangster of hip hop, it came from the record companies, it came from the media. I mean, yeah, you live with that shit, man, but I don't go around saying, yo, I'm the original gangster of hip hop, but I know if it comes to that title and motherfuckers try to challenge it, I know who the original gangster of hip hop <laughs> is. I hear that. That's uh, a fact. That's yeah. a fact. Let me yeah. ask you, Lord, and, I, and par- pardon for my tardiness, Lord. Pardon me, man. Don't, don't worry about that, man. Computers are a motherfucker. Yo, son, listen, man, they're crazy. <laughs> Let me ask you, what, what led you to join the 5%? And the part two of that question is, how important is it for our music to return back to Drop and Jewel? Mm. Well, good question, by the way. I became a 5% in 1979 when I was still 13. I got introduced to Nation of 5% when I was in the seventh grade by my man Raheem. He lived next door to me. Early, early. Yeah. Well, we got taught by one of the first nine born. Okay. Mm. We we didn't get taught by no secondhand people handing down diluted lessons. Right. Mm. We got taught, my generation of the Nation of 5%, when I was younger, we got taught, I think it was by um, one of the the original sons from the father, I think it was B.L.R., the one in the wheelchair. Right, Mm. right. I think it was either BLR C Law. I'm not, I'm not, but we got taught by one of the originals. And we didn't get taught by getting handed lessons. Oh, sure. He spoke the lesson, you wrote the lesson down. That's right. Mm. <laughs> one lesson a day. One lesson a day. We had civilization classes. But back to the reason why I joined, I mean, it wasn't a matter of joining, it was just a matter of understanding what was being said and it related to what was happening. Right. And I can relate to it. It's not like some old bullshit Christianity where they tell you you'll go up there and there's something in the motherfucking sky, blonde hair, blue eyes, redneck devil and shit, and, and you're supposed to pray to this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because well, when I look up in the sky, all I see is it's the sky. Earth. I see the sky. I see stars. <laughs> the sky is blue because of the reflection of the sun coming off the ocean. I, I, I see this is the shit that I see. Jeez, Just, and, that, and that related to the nation of 5%. percent mm-hmm. Cause we used to break I mean, back then we was asking questions like, "What makes the grass green?" I mean, we only like we only like thirteen years old now, mm. twelve and thirteen. It opened you up to ask. There you go, and, 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 not, and, 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 and you can actually see what we saying because if you deal with the science of chlorophyll and the plants, you will see how it turns green. Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 and you can see that, like, what makes water wet? Heat. Heat makes water wet. Mm-hmm. It's very simple questions. Now, you ask some of this Christianity, some of this shit, boy, and they'll, 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 they'll take you in a whole different direction and can't, and can't prove a <laughs> goddamn prove thing. <laughs> you can't prove nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. So the, the meaning of me being in the nation of 5% because you show and you prove. Mm-hmm. You show and you prove. Now, for the second part of the question about dropping jewels in a record, I I, I stayed. I, I did that for a second, 
But then I, I go away from that because technically speaking, my mathematics is personal. Mm. It's personal. So I'm not going to get into the fad or the trend of sitting there going through 120 degrees or 122 degrees and, and coming from this avenue or this avenue, but making it sound mathematical for the whole record just so people could be like, wow, what is he talking about? Let's go find out. No, fuck that. Not me. No more. Mm. I'm making motherfucking records that people can understand and dance to. Plain and simple, or, right? Yeah, plain and simple, you know? Not too plain, not too simple, something to make, make you think, but it's not going to be Wise. Yeah, go be right there with you. Yeah, and, and, yeah man. Everyday music for everyday fucking people. Yeah. Because I remember when I used to spit math in a record, a lot of people would see me and be like, just what does this mean? Because you said this in this record. What does this mean? I hate that shit. <laughs> now they want you to give a lecture right now. Right? Yeah, I hate that shit. <laughs> so, it, you know, it come to my realization that if I'm going to make records, just make it where everybody can understand it. Mm. Records were never meant to teach people. Mm. They were never meant to teach people. Yeah. Records, right. records, records were made for entertainment. Entertaining people, yeah. Mm. To entertain people. Now, when hip hop, or not even hip hop, not gonna blame hip hop for this shit. Rap. When rap came along, everybody wanted to be a motherfucking preacher or a minister or some kind of, you know, <laughs> and, and just just start spitting, 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 spitting. <laughs> and I'm like, yo. Certain people don't want to hear that shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, you, right. Work, you work, you work from a... nine, you work from nine to five, Monday through Friday. Friday night, you want to go to a motherfucking party. If you a dude, you yeah. want to go there, have a few drinks, be the chick. If you a chick, you want to go out there with your girls, have a few drinks, be the dude. The last thing you want to do is have a motherfucking record come on, and you like to say, "What the fuck is he saying?" <laughs> So let me so so long, so let me ask you this. So because you you made you made the, you mentioned like not hip hop. But rap, what signified, I guess, the turning point from hip hop to rap, and how do you make the distinction? That's how you, that, that's, see, that's how you can tell the age difference right there. Yeah. See, because I love hip hop. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just not a big fan of rap. I got mm -hmm. you. See, I, when I'm at home, I play hip hop. Mm -hmm. I play hip hop. I have hip hop records, and I'm and got one of them don't have no lyrics on them. Mm -hmm. This is all before hip before that rap shit came out on records. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about hip hop. I mean, shit like Jimmy Castor, shit like Samande Bra, mm. shit like King Erickson. I mean, hip hop records that when you play them, motherfuckers just want to jump on the mic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 See, that's hip hop. Now, this rap shit, you motherfuckers, you on the mic and start talking all this crazy shit. I love rap. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Nowadays, rap is crazy. <laughs> they be saying some shaky shit, man. <laughs> but then you gotta understand the mentality of the motherfuckers who's listening to it. They just as shaky, right? <laughs> so that shit made perfect sense to them. Mm. Motherfucker like me, I'm like this shit sound like space music. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, but like I said, I, I love hip hop, and it'll always long as long as it elevates and keeps elevating. Right. Just don't let it stand still. Right, don't let it be stagnant. That's right. Don't let it. There you go, brother. Don't let it be stagnant. I I gotta ask you. I read somewhere that you was a bouncer, or whatever. How do how yeah, do I used you to, I used bouncer to, to a hip hop artist? Well, actually, when I was a bouncer, I started bouncing when I was like about um, I was still in a group home. I was like about seventeen. Mm. I was seventeen. It used to be a reggae joint down on Canal Street called the Reggae Lounge. Oh, okay. mm. Big fucking big big Jamaican club. At, uh, from eight to two, or from nine to two, it was for like mosh pits and, the, and that kind of shit. So, and I was like bugging the fuck out. So when two o'clock came, that closed down and the Jamaican shit started. I was like, "This is what the fuck I came here for. <laughs> this is what I came here for." Motherfuckers walking in with guns, handing me, "Yo, Reggie, all this." I'm like, "Yo, I see what the fuck you do. Yo, yo, we coming in with our gun, but you own this twenty, you own this fifty. You, I was like, "Yo, hey," because I'm standing by the door. Some shit right. pop up. I'm in the fuck. I'm out. already in the yeah. Right? I'm, 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 I'm standing by the door. I y'all come in, y'all kill each other. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? But that was when I was seven. My son was burning. But that's when I was seventeen, and that started there. 
And it just kept on. It, you know, trust me, that's something I did not want to do. Mm. But the money was so easy. All right. The money was so easy. And luckily for me, I'm smart and I could foresee shit. I was never in a situation where I was in harm. Never. Yeah. Mm. And I and and matter of fact, I could say in every club I ever bounced in, there was no trouble. Wow. There was wow. no trouble. Because it was more adult. And it wasn't a bunch of kids coming at their pants hanging and you know, spit dripping out their mouth, hat on backwards. Get the fuck out of here, you little snaggle tooth motherfucker. Yo, <laughs> it was all about adults and shit. Right. So it wasn't wasn't no problem. Yeah, you got you got your first um record deal with what Fresh Records? What was that? Nineteen eighty six. Exactly. Fresh sleep, step, sleeping back fresh. Yeah, yeah. What was talk a little bit about like the process of getting a record deal in nineteen eighty six? Because it's different now. Now it's like yo, if you get on the internet, you get a buzz on the right. internet. You are gonna get a record deal. Right. <laughs> so, back then, I'm 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 See, that's that cheap shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that cheap shit. See, back then when I got the deal, well, my my I don't know. My shit was kind of easy to be honest, because how I shit my I got introduced to it. I was at the dance interior one night on, a, and at that time it was DJ on every floor. But on the top floor was DJ Africa Islam, mm -hmm. and me and Islam was cool. Me and Islam was cool back then because he used to DJ for a crew I was with up in the Bronx. Right. And one thing led to another. He started playing. I grabbed the mic and started rhyming a little bit. The skinny kid was standing next to us. Didn't know who the fuck he was. We thought he was a white kid, but he wasn't. Mm. It was Mantronics. Mantronics. Oh, Mantronics. He just right. happened to, yeah, yeah, he was, um, Mantronics was like half Arab, half Jamaican. So when you looked at him and shit. That's a weird like, combination. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And when you look wow. at him and shit, you, yeah, so say, we look, you don't know, we don't know what the fuck to say. For real. Mm. <laughs> we don't know what the fuck to say. And then after I finished rhyming, he, and this is the time, if you remember, Fresh is the Word. Yes, sir. Banging, yeah. Fresh, Fresh is the, the word. word was banging. Mm. Him and MCT. Yeah, and he was like, "Yo, man, <clears throat> my name is Mantronis." Blah 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 blah. He said, "Come on down." I'm, 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 you know, I'm saying, "Okay, cool." I have no idea what the fuck he wants me to do. So, I go down and talk to him. He was like, "Yo, if you could bring us this, bring us that, this, this." I said, "Fine." Back then, I basically was living near Fort Greene, mm -hmm. so every day, I would. Matter of fact, I'm trying to be more precise. Well. Me and DMX used to meet. It's a place in called Brooklyn called Metro Tech now. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Anybody you know where Metro Tech is? Yeah. By the, down there by J Street. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know where. And you know where the hotels are and everything right there. Me and Ben used to go there before any of that shit was built. Mm. It used to be wow. a big ass park. That's where all the kids, because right down the block was New York City Technical College. That's where all the college kids would walk up to the park. And come sit down and eat, smoke, drink, or whatever before they go back to, you know. And then all of a sudden they built Metro Tech. But me and Ben used to meet up there every morning and practice Latoya. Latoya. Wow. Yeah, Let every morning we used to practice <laughs> Latoya. And then right down on Myrtle Avenue, before you get to uh, Flatbush Extension, there was a studio, little rinky dink studio. Seen a guy, and I'm, I, I talked to the guy, he said $22 an hour. I'm like, okay, cool. I had no idea what to do. I gave my $22, right? This is the funniest shit in the world. He has some, lin you remember the Lindrum? Anybody, mm -hmm. anybody familiar yeah. with drums, drum machines? Yeah. yeah. The, it was one called the Lindrum. Right. And I was just in there, because I remember Grandmaster Flash used to be like, you know, I'm like, I'm going to be like Flash in this motherfucker. Make up a beat. <laughs> I made up a, this beat was whack. Straight up whack. <laughs> but then I threw down the lyrics to put the record back on. Mm. And the guy was like, yo, you should let me work on this. And I was like, nah, that's OK. I got somebody <laughs> listen to this. I took it straight to Mantronics. Mm. They cleaned it up for you. Yo, Mantronics was like, this is the worst shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what about the lyrics? He's like, the lyrics is OK, but the clarity. I didn't know what I was doing, dogs. $22 mm. in one hour. I, I did something, though. That, that's, how, that, that's how I got the deal with mm. Stephen Back Fresh. The first record I ever did was put the record back on. Wow. And it just took off from there. Now, why? Hey, wait, hold, hold, hold on, Rob. Let me ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, 1986, what did that deal look like in 1986? Like, what, what, did, they, what did they offer you to actually sign a record deal with them? Um, 
for one, the signing was like about maybe 30,000. It was plus, plus they bought me or they, they halfway bought me and I had to put the rest to it and now why I'm selling it anyway. The con- a condominium up in Parkchester. Oh, okay. Now the only good deal about that was when I sold the condominium, all the money was mine. They didn't get any of it. Oh no! You, know, they helped you me was get thinking, Lord. You was thinking, bro. Yeah. yeah. You got a better deal in 1986 than some of these dudes yeah. getting now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was either the condo or the car, and I knew I couldn't live in a car. Right. <laughs> there you go. So I got the condo. I had to put half to what they was matching. I had to match to what they, you know, they was doing. But mm-hmm. at the end, when it was sold, I got more money. And yeah. by that time, they ass was out of business, so they didn't get a dime. <laughs> who, who helped you? Who helped you broker that deal? Because yo, we had plenty of people come on here and talk about how horrific their deals were in 1986. And I'm not saying your deal was great, but no, I didn't have, did I did not have the best deal in the world. But for that time, I had a good deal. Yeah. I did everything myself. I did everything myself. Damn, I didn't have I didn't have no entertainment lawyer or anything. I had a criminal lawyer. (laughs) 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 But nah, I did everything myself. Wow, you got a condo out of that? Yeah. Hey, listen. Yes. And a bunch of cash, right? Is it is it true that you had to find something to ride with Scoop for you? Uh, for Latoya, yeah, yeah, that, Latoya, was, a pain, that was a pain in the ass. That was just a crazy, just a song, entertainment. Here we go, with entertainment. You had to make, yeah, up. that entertainment. Yeah, I did that shit on my lunch hour. I, <laughs> I was, um, I was a dishwasher at um, some uh Italian restaurant down in lower Manhattan, like in, a, in, a, in the 20s or something. I forgot the name of this shit. And during the lunch hour, got me a plate of spaghetti with some meatballs, and I went downstairs with my pad and my pen. I was eating, and that shit just came. I got the whole rhyme done. Scoop and for I you. Could, I, tell, I couldn't. I couldn't think of the beginning, but I was like, "Fuck it." No, it was more or less like um, I had to rhyme. Scoop for you, Latoya. Yeah. And that's why I said Latoya because I don't know a Latoya, so nobody mm-hmm. can accuse me of saying anything about them. <laughs> okay. yeah. Right, right. It makes sense. Yeah, you want to talk about my sister? <laughs> there you go. I don't know no Latoya. To this day, I don't know no damn Latoya. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's like one of my favorite um favorite joints by you. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I remember Thank, I appreciate it. going to a party when that came on. Yo, the floor got crazy, bro. Yeah, like, he jumped on the floor. Chicks was on the floor. It was all crazy. yeah, like, yeah. Real, yeah. Yo, that shit to me is like the like the hood version of Lottie Dottie. Like that's who. Uh, that's where I got the inspiration. <laughs> It was because, Latoya, Latoya, Veronica were the two of the joints from back then. I, remember, I, remember. Yeah. I didn't do Veronica. I know you didn't. I'm just no, saying no, no, those two songs. Latoya oh, okay. and Veronica was like, who are these yeah. chicks? Latoya and Veronica yeah. is getting the Yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. What you said? Yeah, I, remember, I, I remember back in the days before Lottie Dottie even came out on record. Yeah. Hmm. Before it was out on record, it was only out on cassettes. On cassette. Mm-hmm. It was only out on cassettes. And it was the real extended version of Lottie Dottie. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I remember the first time I ever heard this in the club. It was at um, remember um, the Roxy? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Remember the Roxy? Then it turned into ten eighteen. Mm-hmm. Now I remember the night I heard it because uh, remember that girl Lisa Lisa? Yes, yeah. sir. Lisa oh, come um, jam. 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 Yeah. Her sister, her older sister, was a bouncer or one of the <laughs> women that checked you at the door yeah. of the Roxy ten eighteen. And when I looked at her, she was like, no, I'm not Lisa. Cause yo, they look exactly the same. Mm. And we went on inside and it was like about a good, I don't know, 12 o'clock, 12.30, pushing one. And Dougie Fresh walked in. He walked in with his crew. And, the, and the, whoever was on a DJ, they announced it, you know? Yeah. This is before, this, this is before there wasn't Just Ice. Mm. This is before it wasn't Just Ice. This was just regular Justice Servicious. Now, <laughs> all of a sudden, as soon as Dougie walk in now, 10 minutes later, the original Lottie Dottie comes on. Mm. And I'm saying to myself, yo, that's a clear ass cassette. Yeah. yeah. I made my way to the DJ booth. That shit was on acetate. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he put that shit on acetate. And mm. it's just like nowadays, 
how if you get a buzz on the internet, you're better off to get a record deal. Yeah. Same thing he did with Lottie Dottie. He okay. played his head so much on the cassettes, everybody knew it. And he yeah. when he played it in the club, you knew it wasn't a fucking record that you could go out and buy. It's not, it's not a little, but, yeah. yeah, but you but distorted. you know it. But you right. know it. Yeah. Yeah. But slick slick Rick's voice back then was banging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody other side like of that, Rick. Other side of that was treated like a prostitute. Yeah. But the original. The original you know, on, the, on the acetate, no, remember, treat him like a prostitute came out like about seven to nine months later. Yeah. Mm. Lottie Dottie and Treatum was not out at the same exact time until at the end. Because mm. the original Treatum like a prostitute, they started talking about Vanessa Williams and all that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like a prostitute. No, those yeah. records were, to me, those records were inspiration because it wasn't like, that was, to me, that was raw talent. Somebody doing a beatbox, somebody yeah. rhyming. Very simple. Raw talent. That's what caught my attention. Especially the 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 way that they put Lottie Dottie together right. and all of that. I'm it like, sound like oh. a, a straight up routine. Yeah. 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 And I didn't want my shit to sound like no routine. I wanted to sound like my shit. Me and me and DMX was just walking down the street. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, but I give I give respect to Ducky Man for what he did for free. He broke the mold with that. And I, I and I and I just capitalized on that shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, so Fresh Records had EPMD. They had you, they had Tila Rock, they had Nice and Smooth when hip hop was really hip hop. Right. Why do you think they ultimately failed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Them niggas don't know how to pay no bills, man. You <laughs> <laughs> bad didn't pay no fucking bills. <laughs> I like the money and kept it moving. <laughs> yeah, I remember the morning I came, I got off the elevator. I see Jeffy Gales on the step with the phone, the big lock on the door. Oh, I said, I'm not getting no check today. <laughs> 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 Them niggas didn't pay no bills, man. And it's like when they left, when they left off uh, the original office on um 66 and Broadway, they went down to um 33rd and 9th Avenue, something like that. Mm. Another big, another big huge office. They lost that. They didn't pay no bills. Then eventually, Damn. then eventually. They were taking the cream. Well, Will so I'm gonna tell you something. Will Sokolov was one of the owners for uh Sleeping Back Fresh. Mm -hmm. He owned a record company called Freeze Records. I remember oh, familiar Freeze. with it. Yeah. Do you know who his first artist was? Jay-Z. Jay-Z. And a dummy yeah. let him go. Yeah, Jay-Z. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, Jay-Z. Jay-Z was his first artist. Yeah. And I was like, wow. But to this day, Will presses vinyl. Mm. I don't know. He just said he presses for whoever, you know, whoever needs it. He's a vinyl presser. I'm like, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yo, there's a market though for um pressing vinyl, more so for like collectors' items and stuff like that. Not it ain't like somebody gonna be like, yo, I, I want it on album, but for collectors' edition, you you know everything is Serato now, so it's not like DJs yeah, need vinyl. I still collect vinyl though, man. You'd be surprised, man. I, I, shit, man. I spend but, too much money on vinyl. But most of the vinyl you get, do you get it when you go overseas? I, I, where I'm, wherever I'm at, I could buy vinyl right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could be talking, I'd be on my phone with discards, ordering <laughs> some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm always looking for certain records. See, my collection of records is more yard music than anything. Mm. Okay. You hear the influence in your music, too. Yeah. You know, so I don't, my American music, I'll go on the internet and just download that shit. Mm. No bullshit. All American music, I'll just download it. Because to me, that's easy music. Now, if it comes to some yard music, that I know I can't because I mean, where I'm at living, I, there's no reggae stores anyway, so everything mm. is computer. Mm. Anything oh, that I computer. want, any, anything I want, I just get it and I just order it and it comes here, you know. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fiend for that shit. Yeah, you're purist too. That yeah, vinyl. I keep my shit real, man. I, I mean, I keep my shit real. Like I said, when I play, when I play music here in the house. I will play rap every now and then, but it's a certain <laughs> rap. It'll be like Kumo D. Or okay. the feel is for, you know, Tito or something like that. Right. But basically, my shit is basically yard music. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Basically, yard music. Was Cool and Deadly a BDP production? Uh, yes. It was. That was because um, the same day that we signed the contract to do that album, 
that was the day that Scott LaRock got killed. Damn. He got killed on that day. We all signed the contract that day. And then later on that night, because we were supposed to meet up at Power Play Studios and start recording. Mm. And before I even got to the studio, Chris calls me up in my house because the first record that we actually did on that album was on the strength. Mm. And he called me up. He was like, Scott's gone. I'm like, fuck you mean, where did he go? <laughs> He's like, yo, he got killed. Wow. And then he explained everything to me. And so what happened was Chris just wound up doing that album by itself. Mm. Wow. Chris yeah, that, that, was gonna be my, that was gonna be my second question. I don't, want, I don't really don't want to talk about that Scott and Rock shit, dog. Not, not yeah, the Scott and Rock. I always thought maybe you and Chris would have worked together and did an album together. What do you, well, oh, you mean with both of us on it, on it together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nah, he couldn't do. He didn't want that back then, and, and I really didn't want that back then. Mm. Because that wasn't we a thing back then. But I just asked yeah, that. yeah, we weren't we weren't just Ice and KRS One. It wasn't that. Mm -hmm. I was down with BDP, but I'm just ice. That's right. KRS One is cool with just ice, but that's KRS One and BDP. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, it's just separate entities. Wow. How did the relationship with um with, with KRS One come about? Oh gosh, we were homeless people. <laughs> and, and, and Chris talks about that a lot too, bro. We were yeah. homeless people. He talked about that under <laughs> under under twenty one. Mm. Remember that shit under twenty one. Yeah, mm -hmm. was it well, Chris was in the shelter because I live I lived on um 168th and Union. Man, I you, ah, you mean you mean the one on 166 in Franklin? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that son of a bitch. He took me. But then I go to Chris. <laughs> we was at BD. We was at uh Broadway International Disco, and I'm like, Yo, Chris, man, I'm fucked up. I ain't got nowhere to stay. Don't worry, just I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. you, man. So we hanging out <clears throat> all night. Come come time to go home. This is when Scott LaRock was the DJ. And we go to this, I'm like, where the fuck are you taking me? He's like, this is where I live. I said, this is a shelter. He's like, yeah, the best for you in there too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, funny, I was man. like, fucked up. I was like, I fuck it. I went, I went. It was a Sunday night going into Monday morning. Here go the crazy part. You got to go through orientation and all that shit if you're a new person there. Mm -hmm. And you have to see the social worker. Guess who the social worker was? Scott LaRock. Scott LaRock. Scott LaRock. I didn't know that. I'm like, nigga, what did you just DJ last night? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, for real. And that's one of the places that me and Chris had lived for a second. We always split up and came back, split up and came back because we was homeless. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But shit worked out for the best. He doing his thing. I'm doing mine. Big up to the man. Mm. Yo, you know what? I, I, I admire that about Karis one like yo to me like yo he just embodies everything hip hop like from the graffiti to the yeah. music to yeah just everything about him like the struggle the resilience and all that like yo I I I, I admire him about that and I and I I commend him for actually working through that because there's a lot of dudes that you know if you homeless rap ain't on your mind partying ain't on your mind well, let's just go get you out the gutter that's a fact. I think it's the pedigree of living in the Bronx because you had to survive coming out of the Bronx, bro. Yo, let me tell you something, man. Coming up in the Bronx back in the 70s was hard. <laughs> and I was young. I got introduced to hip hop in 75 when I was hanging out in Hunts Point. But, mm. I, but even before, then, you know, going to my aunt's house and seeing the area of Hunts Point, you go oh, outside, damn. number of number, prostitutes, stuff. This is before Al's Wedge. This is before Al's Wedge. Mm. <laughs> out to the Wedge. Hey, this is this is before the wedge. Wow. You know, you know, oh, you only know about the wedge if you're from the Bronx. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wedge, Harry's Triangle, Harry's yeah. all that shit. All, the all right, sir. all that shit. It's all yeah. right down there. And this is before them. This is when they didn't have the way. This was this is before the prostitutes didn't have the way to hang out. So they hung out of course from my aunt's house. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it was rough back then, man. Castle Hill was rough. Hunts Point was rough. It was just rough. That's when it was originally the burnt down Bronx. Mm -hmm. That's when the Bronx was just burnt the fuck down. Yeah. yeah. Two train going through Intervale, Simpson, and all that shit. Right. All you see yeah. is burnt the fuck down buildings. <laughs> <laughs> there was no Jew man. There was no Jew man. Yo, yeah. he said Jew man. He took yeah. 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 You gotta be from the Bronx to know about that shit. Yeah. Yeah. You from the Bronx. You know about yeah. Jew man. Yeah. Say, you Jew know man. Jew man on one end and all the way down by Southern Boulevard. And um, 
What was it called? Hosiery. Yeah. Right. Right. Hosiery yeah. was the other one. Yeah. yeah, on the opposite corner, yeah. But on the opposite, the other one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, he said, you man. Yeah, they kept classic fresh in there, too. You kept yeah. classic man, kick. Let me tell you something, man. Everything when I there. was going to, when I used to go to, um, I used to be go to 174 on um White Plains Road, right right off of Randall. I don't, what was that shit? And it was a long block, but it was White Plains Road. And on Saturdays and Sundays, or Fridays and Saturdays, I used to go to Jew Man by myself. I'm in the eighth grade. I'm like, yo, you try it, I will Fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> I used to see niggas get robbed. I used to sit there and laugh. Oh, yeah. Mm. Like, I'm saying to myself, how this shit happen? Was getting... No, 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 no. You don't see what's getting ready to happen? Yeah, they don't. You don't see this shit? And I'm like this here. I'm like this dumb motherfucker. And back in the day, niggas just walk up to you. Yo, yo, hand it over real quick. Just yeah, give it up. No. Give it up. Jew give it up real man. quick. And I'm like, yo, Jew matches, you get robbed. You I used to go there by myself. I used to go there, yo. I mean, I yo, I didn't give a yo. I just didn't care. You fuck with me, you might get me today, but I'm gonna catch your ass back out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't hear Jew Man in a minute, but Jew Man was the spot. You used to go there, get your kicks. You could get your leather jacket. Everything. You get, you get I'm talking about the original Jew Man too. Not yeah. the one that was around the corner. In yeah, the I know. I come up the one that was right under the train station. Yeah, right yeah. Under the yeah. Right between Simpson and Freeman. The yeah, right there. Between yeah. Simpson and Freeman. Yeah. Between Simpson and Freeman. Yeah, yeah. Before they went down the block and made the big store. Yeah. Yo, I used to stack this, man. If you was a punk, you should not go there. And no. on, on, on Fordham, people, I mean, Dr. J's, people would go up and hit up Dr. J's. Yeah, on yeah. See, that, I never, I never, I, to me, Dr. That, that was like too, it was too open. Nah, that's yeah, right. You used to go to Dr. J's, Gene Plus, VIM, Third Ave. You had that Third Ave pretty much had the same shit like VIM. Dr. Yeah. J's I used to go to VIM to get my son some shit. Mm-hmm. I love Frank's on Tremont. Frank's, uh, Frank's, Frank's on Tremont. On, Frank's on, nah, I like Frank's. <laughs> yeah, you go in there, you go in there and get a gun license. <laughs> <laughs> Frank was the official, yeah, the official shit. Frank, you go yo, Frank, Frank was official. Yeah. You go in there and apply for your gun license in there, yeah. and. If you were, you know, if he knew you, put it like that, yeah. if he knew you, right, you would get a break. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You would get a break. Your face, you'll break. Yes, right. Yep. You yeah, you get a break. I remember, me and, I remember me and OC from the Fearless Boy used to frequent that place. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, right up the block from Frank's, the fever. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it wasn't the fever. It used to be called the Devil's Nest. Mm. Was it the fever? The fever. Uh, the fever's on the fever's on McCombs Road. That's over there by by by, by one sixty something Street. That's didn't they um? In, didn't in they, River Avenue. Didn't yeah. they um? How you call it though? Didn't they revamp it though? And end up making nah. the, the fever right there on Tremont. Frank's or? not. Listen, listen. Frank's is right by the um. What do you call it? The Metro North train yes, station. Sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sir. it's the right bank there. Bank was across the street. Right across the street. No, the right. bank was across the street going the the, the big way. But right. if you go across Tremont. Mm-hmm. On the same side as Frank's, you run into the Devil's Nest. It was right there on the corner. That was the yeah. Devil's Nest. They changed it to Roombas. Mm. That's why I used to do a lot of bouncing. That's where I met my wife. Everything. Oh, Trust wow. me. I remember when the Devil's Nest used to be one of the biggest hip hop spots in the Bronx. Yeah. I remember the night Tila Rock played there in like 80, 88 or mm. 87, 88. It was so packed. So that was the Devil's Nest. The Fever's on McCombs Road over there on River Avenue. With Super mm. Sal and all of them. Okay. What's the um? So what was the other Parkside Plaza was over there? What's yeah, the other park, shit? The, the FCC Garage. Mm. The FCC Garage. You take the number four train to uh, I think one seventieth. Mm. You, you walk up the block. I, no, no, no. I haven't. No, I haven't. The ballroom. Okay. The Stardust mm. Ballroom. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, oh, yeah. Where, where's that look? That, uh, that's over there on um what? The Boston Road. Boston Road. Oh, Bro, Boston yeah. Road. No, 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 nah. And you know why? See, I don't see, see back in the days, I that, that was some Herculoid and breakout type shit. That's break DJ breakout yeah. from that area. That's, that's, break, bro, that's breakout shit. Because I right. used to live up there and breakout, me and breakout. I used to see breakout like every month coming, he would be you know doing his thing up there on Gun Hill Road. Yeah, but um that's nah. OG, man. Yeah, yo, break yo. I, I, I heard breakout play recently. Yes, sir. In the park. That boy that, 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 that rock day in Gun Hill Project. Shot rock. Nah, I got some shit on I got some shit on the internet though. <laughs> when he was, he's in this, when he's in this, um, that, that car, that little doom buggy. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. playing one of his tapes. Yo. Classic. The shit that he's playing. 
That's what made him special and his sound system. Because mm. Bam could play, Flash could play, Hurt could play. It didn't sound, whatever they was playing, if, if Breakout played it, it sounded totally different because of the bass. Because of the mm. bass. The mighty body yeah, sauce. Even to this day, you can go in his backyard, he has the whole block locked off, and you can hear his music, and it sounds like 1979 jam, bro. <laughs> yeah. And he's still, he's still <laughs> spinning the same break beats. No, no, uh, no new hip hop, just break beats. Break beats. That's, That's what I'm saying. Break beats. Hip hop. Mm. Hip hop. Before the motherfucker, before motherfuckers touched the mic. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All break beats, man. Shout out to DJ Breakout, big homie, son. Yeah. Breakout and Baron. Yo, is it true that um heavy that that rest in peace to heavy D? Is it true though that he kind of um oh, lifted oh, the concept of don't curse from you and Karis one? Yes, yes, he did. I don't even <laughs> like talking about it. I didn't mind talking about it when Heavy was alive, but now nah, his brother yeah, passed yeah. away. I don't like talking about it, but yeah, he he got that. <laughs> he got that. Yo, let's so, leave that alone. So, what you learned from that experience? Like, did you say like, don't talk I, around I, motherfuckers? Say like, yo, yeah. Don't yeah. talk around. Keep your ideas to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like yeah, being yeah. a part of the self destruction record? You know, the actual recording of it and being in the video. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well. Uh, being a part of that record at that time, I didn't fully understand. I'm not gonna lie. As I got older, I understood it more as I got older. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason that I wanted to be on that record is to show that you don't have to be hard all the time. You know, you can switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the person who was in charge of the record didn't want me on there, period. Oh, wow. it, was, it was like, justice is too... Eh, I'm like, whatever. I don't want him on the record. So, mm. Dougie first was like, well, just ain't gonna be on the record, I'm not gonna be on the record. Mm. Uh, how about that? How about that? <laughs> Kareem, Kareem, Daddy Yoko stepped in front of was like, well, if they gonna be on the record, we ain't gonna do the record either. Mm. <laughs> it, it started a chain reaction. Oh, wow. So and Carly had no choice but to be like, okay, just you can be on the record. So mm. I went down that road. It was a sixteen bars, some real soft shit, and I recorded it. And that was the fun part. Do you know they shot the video? I think in three days. Huh. I must have missed two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I must have missed two of them. I got to see the jail part on time. The part when they was in Mount Morris Park, when everybody was sitting down doing it, I'm yeah. not yeah. there. Oh, wow. I'm not there. I'm, I'm getting my hair cut. <laughs> I'm the barber still. I was getting my hair cut and shit. So uh, it, it was kind of fun while he was there. The 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 part where he was in the Schaumburg on 135th Street, we was all mm -hmm. sitting around the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of cool. I mean, to be honest, dog, the best thing about all that shit was the food because we had a lot of food. There was a lot of food. There was a lot of food there. So I'm like, yo, I like to eat. <laughs> so you know. I was eating my ass off. I was, I was, I was the one of the last motherfuckers to leave. I was trying to take, take some shit home. Fuck that, man. <laughs> you know, that, that to me was like the hip hop, kind of like the hip hop, we are the world um, yeah. Yeah. back then. But I'm, I'm just wondering, like, because from my perspective, I always thought it was a record that was crafted by Karis One, that it was his brainchild. And he was like, yo, I'm going to put this together. But he, I, it, was his, it was kind of his brainchild, but mm -hmm. it took on a life of its own. Mm. You know, it was, I mean, because all it was like it was a thought that everybody was having, but nobody brought it to the forefront. He mm -hmm. did, right? He, I think he, he brought it to Ann Carly, right? And since it was something that everybody was thinking of, but it's like nobody wants to say it, but we're all thinking it, right? All right, he brought it up, and that's what it took on a life of his own, and, and that it, it just took off. What was the acronym? Heal, healing education against lives, something yeah. like that. That was a different record, right? That yeah. was he was a different record. Yeah, I think it was a different. That was but a different record. How how come? I mean, I guess since then, I don't know if we've had another record of hip hop artists. I think West Coast had we all in the same gang yeah. or something like that. Oh, they, they had, yeah, but I don't think we've ever had a record, you know, of hip hop artists actually come together. Well, you know why? Why? Why do you think? That I'm, gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Keep it a stack, well, baby. My fuckers don't give a fuck. That's right. <laughs> my fuckers don't give a fuck. Leave it down. <laughs> All they care about is they cheese. Nobody want to share no cheese. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Motherfuckers, are y'all seriously now? Motherfuckers don't give one fuck about let's get together, stop the gun. Don't no. you? It's, it's smart people think like this for years, centuries. We've been talking about the same shit. Stop this, stop this, let's do this, let's do that. Blah, 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 blah. We still talking about it today. It's mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Why waste your fucking time? Mm. <laughs> Why waste your fucking time? Go out there and make my record about Shorty and my new dance and mm. how my brother's bigger than you. And I'm gonna make millions. I'm gonna make millions. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go on TikTok and do the dumbest shit in the world. Make millions. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna go out there and talk about trying to heal the nation, heal the people. Blah, blah, blah. What am I get? A million people listening. While the mm. other fucking millions and billions is doing other things, man, <laughs> listen, I'm all for healing of people. I'm all mm -hmm. for it, but it gotta start with self. Yeah, mm -hmm. it gotta start with self. I'm not gonna sit there and take my ideas and my thoughts and try to implant them on you, and your fucking thoughts are somewhere else in the gutter. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting you say that because a lot of people attribute it to um to the music industry. You know, like, so do you think it's more so about the actual artist or is it the music industry that's like, nah, we don't want that. We only want you with the fuckery. Well, I, I, half and half, put it like that. Mm. Half and half. Half and half. Because some people, I don't know, man. I don't know what you think you're going to get out of making a record trying to uplift a people. I don't know what you're going to get out of that. Mm. Nobody's gonna buy that. She said that yeah. earlier. It's not, it's not for it's entertainment. It's, it's not entertainment. For, it's not yeah. I, I, I understand that in the late 90s, Chris came out with the term edutainment. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's only if you want to be educated to a beat. When mm -hmm. I go to a fucking party, the last thing I want to hear is about a fucking history. <laughs> I got the history channel for that shit. Yeah. I, want to, I want to, like I said, man, I, I want to party. I right. you know what right. I mean? I think Jay I want to sit there and party on one line. Next line, I'm going to be there doing math and shit. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Yada, we need that up tempo shit. Yada, you know, yo, Jay yo. said something like that. I'm, and I and think like I said, I'm not against uplifting the people, but it got to start with self. If mm. you want to get uplifted, then you uplift yourself. If you know somebody that want to get uplifted, then you help that person. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You just don't go out there randomly throwing out your shit. <laughs> yeah. Right. There was, there was, there was. I, I feel like that there was a period, a brief period in hip hop where enlightenment and and uplifting was actually celebrated. Like when we had the the um the X clans, or you know, we had the poor righteous teachers. Oh, gosh, yo, motherfuckers. Yo, yo, hold on, hold on, just hold on. We had, yo, we had dudes that was really talking about, you know, like knowledge itself and PE Ooh, and everything. Like, 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 like Lamuba. I mean, I could, well, if, even if you, yeah. you, wanna, did you, did you, did you, do you, do you know Lumumba? You talk, you, you taking it now. You taking it. How you call it back? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm talking about like even if you think about dudes like PE, like PE have records that you could party to, but there also was some nuggets of information yeah. in there. That's cool because yeah. it was he. Chuck is a smart brother. Mm -hmm. Chuck kept it eighty percent party. Give you a little bit of knowledge at the end of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna keep it 80% party. We're gonna just go in there and just bang your head with this, that, 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 that. You know, you're gonna do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And getting back to the X Clan. <laughs> you gotta speak the medicine to the east, my brother. To the east, my brother. Nah, I'm just gonna say big up to the X Clan, man. Just big nah, up. I'm about to drop a jewel on us, just yeah. over the nah, that, yes. bro. Nah, yeah, I'm just hear. saying, everybody who speaks about Uplifting the people and this, that, and the third. <laughs> behind closed doors, they ain't really about that. They ain't about that. <laughs> <laughs> behind closed doors, they ain't really about that, man. It's it's, it's entertainment. So mm. that's an image. That's an image too. Another way to figure to try to angle to get some sales or get the bag or something. It's a gimmick, man. I mean, yeah. people forgot making records is entertainment. Mm. There's nothing truthful about this shit. It's like looking at a story on TV. It's totally made up to look believable. Damn. So it's totally made up to sound believable. You yeah. know what's funny? You say that. I was listening to the radio this, this morning, and somebody was talking about um, Nas made If I Rule the World, and he said he opened up all the cells in Africa and sent them to Attica. I, and somebody, somebody was like, 
Well, I don't know if I like that. I'm like, like you sitting here saying that's entertainment. They sitting here analyzing and talking about whether they were looking. Yes, the that's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Ryman, back in the days when Ryman first started, you just you you you, you tried to rhyme any word with any word just so it could mm-hmm. sound good. Scoop for there you. was no there was you. no there was no fucking um there was no real significant meaning behind it. Yeah. It was rhyming. He opened up all the cells in Africa and sent him to Attica. Big yeah. motherfucking deal. Yo, Nas, big up, my brother. <laughs> big the fuck up, man. Yeah. Keep, on, keep on saying what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Mm. People want to sit there and analyze every motherfucker. Go, yo, go write a dictionary. <laughs> real, go write a dictionary or something, man. Yo, you think I don't like that. You think you think so you think Melly Mel with the message opened the door for like the overanalyzation of hip hop? <laughs> Mel killed him. Mel took him to a level, whereas that's when you started really realizing people who was listening to hip hop, they were idiots. <laughs> they knew none of that stuff was going on. Know, Mel, Mel, Mel had them like this here. I think I think the only verse they really understood was "Don't push me, cause I'm close <laughs> to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head." <laughs> now. It's like a juggle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Certain people didn't know what the fuck that meant. Yeah. They was like, what jungle? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, don't he live in the Bronx? Oh, man. <laughs> they didn't they, they, they understand about the concrete jungle. Yeah. Right? See? And it was, the, and what really, if you, yo, know, remember when he made New York, New York? Mm. He got deeper. So y'all don't remember that. I don't know. Twelve and thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Judge, you breaking my heart because yo, there's there's hip hop artists that I'm just picturing. I don't want to name them, but like that picturing them behind closed doors eating a pork chop sandwich, but on record. Hey, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> <laughs> you got a BLT. I mean, you know, you just a BLT. You know, you back to something because back in the days when we used to go to rallies and shit. We knew it was snakes in that motherfucker, so it was always a certain brother who just didn't give a fuck. He would come up there and for all you snake ass niggas, we know about y'all. You go home, you and your cousin, y'all look in the oven, you see that ham, you be like, I won't tell, you won't tell. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, but yeah, but you gotta understand just because a person was on the microphone talking about (laughs) this here, how you know A and B, they go home, man, they doing C and D. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Every okay. people who understand that this is a music business, an entertainment mm-hmm. business, those are the ones I big up. The people who actually think that this is a format mm-hmm. or a platform for you to get your personal message across about mm-hmm. how you don't like how the oil prices are or climate change. <laughs> <in the wrong laughs> <place. laughs> no, I don't think the average consumer is interested oh, in hearing yeah. about that anyway. Um, with this being the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Do you feel like that, and this this is my opinion, I feel like there has been more light sort of shined on hip hop and trying to kind of give kudos to pioneers and everything. But it's all around the time of the 50th anniversary, right? Like when year 51 comes, are we still going to be on the same shit or is it going to be like, yo, go ahead back to wherever you I are? I tell you one motherfucker who ain't going to, who going to still be on the same shit. He been on it for the last 50 years. He going to be on it for the next 20 years. You know who I'm talking about? You. My man, cool, no, cool DJ Hurt. You can't mm. fuck with Hurt. Hurt walk around with this big ass chip on his shoulder and be like, y'all dare you to knock it off, nigga. You owe me money. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, yo, I'm, you owe me money. I'm, I'm, like, yo, Hurt. I'm like, Hurt, this is my brother. Yeah, like, cool yeah, Hurt, yeah. Cool, cool Hurt, keep it a stack. I met Cool Hurt before. Uh, my father in law is doing a documentary and he he um he interviewed Cool Hurt. So I had the opportunity to spend some time with him. Cool Hurt, keep it a stack. Like, he just. That, yo, he's raw. He's raw with his shit. Yo, let me tell you something, man. On a certain side of the Bronx, if it wasn't for her, it wouldn't have been no hip hop. Mm, if it wasn't for her and Cindy doing that little um sweet his sixteen party at the party. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it wouldn't have. But see, but there was shit going on on the other side of the Bronx. Oh shit! Just as you old as her tonight. Just, just, <laughs> just as old as her. Or maybe a little older because we got pictures of Herc at Disco King Mario parties. Mm. Mm. 
Wow. You went there. There are pictures of her mm. at Disco King Mario parties. Wow. See, people don't realize Mario Nothing. was a Ma Mario. Oh, Mario. Disco King Mario. I used to go to Disco King Mario party. I was like about maybe. I was matter of fact, I was still in the seventh grade. I wasn't even in fucking high school yet. I was still in the seventh and eighth grade because I was this one. I was going back and forth from Brooklyn Franklin Avenue back to Castle Hill. Mm. Every day, Brooklyn to Bronx. So when there was a party on the weekend, when Mario would play in Bronxdale outside, every fucking body came. All the projects came. Bronxdale came. Castle Hill came. Soundview came. Monroe came. Sackworn came. Soundview Little Houses came. Bronx River mm -hmm. came. They came. That's Mario. Mm. That's Disco King Mario. Damn. Motherfuckers don't realize that Mario was down with Mayberry, Big Mac, and Chuck City. Chuck so City. Mario had that shit covered. And mm. he was doing it just as long, if not longer, than Hurt. Wow, I go Damn. see him. Wow, right, right, right. That shit is like an age-old debate. You know you probably yeah. ruffling the covers with that. Right, yo, I don't go wrong to no goddamn problems. Anybody you know hip hop <laughs> know Mario was out there. Everybody know. I'm like I said, on one side of the Bronx, Herc had it. Mm. Herc introduced it over there. That's yeah. the west side of the Bronx. Shout out Cedric Avenue. Yeah. Cedric Avenue, that's where Brucey B, mm -hmm. the, that's where them niggas grew up at. Yeah. But on our side, on our side. Bronx, though. On, on the number six train line. Ah, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The number six train line. See, Mario had that shit covered. Mm. And you knew. You say, you, you, as soon as you go to Bronxdale, Mm -hmm. That's back in the days when they had the when they had the um what's that shit the White Castle yeah it's right, on Brooklyn, right on Brooklyn it's still it's there, there man. yeah but the yeah. burgers was the burgers were twenty two cents back then <laughs> yeah I remember when the burgers were probably less than twenty two cents yeah. and one time it was I remember they were twelve cents but now I was they, mad little they used to give you the ticket little. with the number on it remember yeah. 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 yeah by the time I'm saying by the time I was able to go to the counter it was twenty two cents. <laughs> <laughs> And right on the corner of Castle Hill and um, was it Buckner? They had a place called Wesson's. Yeah. yeah. Wesson's. Yeah. It was right down the block of PS36 mm -hmm. where Jennifer Lopez and Hustlers used to go. Okay. Y'all don't, don't know about that. Yo, you don't know about that. Nah, you, 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 I call it. I, I, yo, yo. It's, 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 see, like I say, it's a difference in being there and it's a difference in hearing it and repeating it. I don't mm. have to repeat it. I was there. My mother used to work in 36. We used to see Jennifer every goddamn day. Her and her sisters. Yo. Wait, so, I, so how do we how do we keep the same energy that they got right now with the 50th anniversary? How do we keep it going post the 50th anniversary? Like I said, brother, it all starts with myself. Mm. So if one person does it, the next person wants to do it, and they get that bug or whatever, I mean, fine. But a lot of people... Are going to go their own separate ways. The fifty is going to always be there. It's going to always be there, but it's not important to just dwell on it because you've got to think about the next fifty. Right. right. It's like hip hop. We love the way the shit is today, right? What's today? Wednesday. That's right. Today's Wednesday, right? I'm up. Mm -hmm. today's Wednesday, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. in the right day and shit, right? All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. Yo, you love it today on Wednesday. Tomorrow it'll be better. You love it then. It mm -hmm. just can't be said. Don't don't forget about Wednesday, because you got to know your past in order to know where you at, the in fact. order to be comfortable to where you're going. Mm -hmm. But you have to know where you're going, and always acknowledge the past. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, they'll they'll that fifty years. Bam! I haven't heard so much about hip hop in all you know in a long time, except for this. Right. Yeah. It's all over the place now. And when I look on TV and I see some of the people that's represented, dead ass wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna mention no names. I ain't gonna mention no names, but dead ass wrong. They ain't got no fucking business up there talking about peace to hip hop. Oh, I, I been hit my motherfucker. You about four years old. What the fuck you know about hip hop? I know I was. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I, I keep my shit the way personal, man. I don't even like if you ain't in my era or you know where I come from with hip hop. I ain't like talking about it. Or or just you know what I peep too, so now with this with these stories coming out with it being the fiftieth anniversary, a lot of the stories have been diluted, and a lot of stories are being told by artists that they deem to be commercial or safe yeah. artists to tell a story. There you go, safe artists. Who the fuck want a safe artist? 
<laughs> yeah, that's corporate America. Yeah, yeah well, the that's why hip hop. He, in corporate America is cold. Here's for another else. thing. Here's another thing. People fail to understand or forgot. Hip hop is not mainstream. Hip hop is underground. Always mm -hmm. been right. Hip hop, hip -hop is a culture. culture. Underground. Yeah. It's underground. Yeah. And hip hop is underground. Hip hop and rap are totally different. Rap is the culture. Hip hop is the music. Mm. Mm. People yeah. forgot that shit. That's right. It's mm. not supposed to be mainstream. So when you have a safe artist on television talking about <laughs> hip hop and everything like that, that is not for me. That is for corporate America. Exactly. Right. Yeah. When I want to hear about hip hop in its rawest form, I'll call certain people. Mm. I'll call Jazzy J up. Jazzy J. I'll, I'll call. I'll call. I'll call Red Alert. I, I'm a pain in the ass to Chuck Chill out and Red Alert. I just call him just to fuck with them <laughs> about music. Yeah, I'll call up people that I know who were there before me or with me. I'll call Van Silk. Me and Van Silk, we talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like I just to me hip hop. Like I said, it's different than rap, man. It's different mm -hmm. than rap. Yes, sir. To me, hip hop is older than rap. Word. Hip hop you is much older than rap. That's a fact. You cool? With, you cool with Hollywood? DJ Hollywood? I met Hollywood. Um, I don't know him personally, so I, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm cool with the brother because he's a you know. I don't know him like we hang out. The last time I saw Hollywood, I was in. It was me, Dougie Fresh, Kumo D. Um, we were down in Dougie's recording studio. Okay. And I just happened to walk up in there because me and Dougie was cool, so I'm just stop by there every now and then. And Hollywood was there. I didn't even know it was Hollywood to be honest until I think I heard Doug call him. Yeah. I was like, yo, that's DJ Hollywood. Because I was young when Hollywood was banging, man. Yeah. When Hollywood was doing clubs, ain't no way in the fuck. I was like about 10 or 11. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I heard yeah. of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I've heard of him. That's like when I met Love Bug Starsky, I bugged out. Because it's, it's, yeah. I'm like, yo, I see you rock the mic so many yeah. times. But then me started talking, and one thing led to another. We became mad cool. Right, that's cool. We became mad cool. So um, Hollywood, like I say, he's not you know we're not buddy buddy buddy, but I respect him because of what he did. He's a he, the day that I met him, he was cool. So he's cool with me. That's cool. Are you yeah, working yeah, on anything he's, he's right now? Too? I heard two questions. I, I was asking, are you working on anything right now? Well, no. Well, I'm writing because I um, just got back in contact with DMX. Nice. But um, the last joint that I did was about maybe a year ago. Me and Curtis, we did a joint called um, Get Your Drink On, Get Your Freak On. Mm -hmm. And it got a good response. It's still, matter of fact, it's still getting a good response from overseas nice. because it sounds like cold getting done. Mm. Okay. okay. It sounds like, I don't know if you heard it yet, it's called Get Your Drink On, Get Your Freak mm -hmm. On. So um, that's the last thing that was actually put out between me and Mantronics. Okay. And uh, we're going to, like I told him, we're going to take it one step at a time because we're not under any contractual pressure like the old days <laughs> where you have to just bang about before a certain time and get the album. We can take our time with this. So we're just taking it one song at a time. Mm -hmm. All right. I see it right now. Get your drink on, get your free. Yo, we made it July 8th last year. A drop yeah, July okay. 8th. Yeah. It dropped last year. Okay. Just you, um, you still doing like shows in the states and shows shows overseas? Overseas, yeah. States, no, I don't like the states yeah. anymore because they're cheap. They're cheap. Fucking their yeah. photos, their photos are cheap, man. But you know what I was gonna say? Overseas, overseas, the appreciation for hip hop is different. It's much higher. Yeah. Exactly. Is that, is that because it is underground overseas? Yeah. It's oh, yes, yes. It's mm. not mainstream over there. I don't even know. If you could turn the radio on and hear American hip hop over there, mm. I don't even know. I don't know. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not right, saying right, that. right, 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 right. I, I know in London now. In London, they got they got radio stations up their ass. Yeah, they got hip hop, reggae, all that. Mm. But say like oh, in man. Amsterdam and little towns like Helmont, forty miles out, because we perform in a town called Helmont. Yeah, Helmont, H E L M O N D, Helmont, about forty miles outside of um Amsterdam. We do that every year. Right. Supposed mm -hmm. to go this year, but I'm waiting on DMX to get his passport. Mm. And um, like I said, they appreciate it. Like you said, they appreciate it much more over there. Yeah. Yep. They appreciate it much more. It's um it's like a difference 
the promoters over there, they realize what's, you know, what we're going to be doing and a little bit of stress. The promoters yeah. in America, they don't give a fuck because half the promoters, see, I, I'm going to stay with New York. New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, they see the motherfucking rappers every day. Yeah. 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 So it's not like it's a real big, big thing. Listen, motherfucker, I'll give you 1500 Come up there, give me six songs. What are you nuts? I'm like, what, what are you fucking crazy or something? Fifteen hundred. <laughs> I can see your ass a song and a half. Yeah. <laughs> see, but that's how the promoters are in in mm. America, and they're they're cheap. They're yeah. cheap. Yeah. What was? So, Go ahead, yeah. brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was say because the last time I got offered a few, it was a few it was about a month or so ago, I got offered two shows in Atlanta, Georgia. I got uh, uh, offered to do an appearance down in Miami to mm-hmm. do something, and I was like, you know, I'm not really, I ain't feeling that shit. I ain't mm-hmm. feeling it. I don't even like the audience no more. Yo, what was the what was it like the first time that you got on stage overseas and you went and you you went to perform? Going Whoa. way, way back. And well, literally, the they time, sung the whole verse for well, you. Well, the first time I performed overseas, going way back, wasn't out. Mm. Put the record back on was out. Put the mm. back. Wow. Put the record did, back. The first time I went the overseas, words? did they ever. They surprised hey. me. And the part that they knew was DMX's part. <laughs> yeah, put that, put that, put that, put that, put that. That's the part. Like, um, but I love you so always cut that shit up. They knew that shit. <laughs> It's like when I started rhyming, they actually started breakdancing. Oh, yeah. they started breakdancing. It's it's totally different over there, man. This is back in '86. Now check this shit out. When I went over there in 2000, I think 12. I went over there, and I, the DJ that I had was awful. It was fucking awful. <laughs> and he, he he just happened to get this one right. He put put the record back on right. <laughs> And it was an instrumental. I'm like, okay, we got that far. I just started rhyming. And then all of a sudden, all these B-boys came up on the stage. Mm. And they did it in a way you could tell it wasn't disrespectful. Because you know, usually, when motherfuckers on stage, they're going to come on stage. You got a problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they came up on stage, but they, they had the sneak, they had the Adidas and the, the Pumas and the sw- oh, I was like, yo, oh, I shit. sit back and I started rhyming. Y'all motherfuckers, I felt like I was back in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's you know dope, what I mean? Yo. It, it, that was the kind of vibe, and it was a good vibe. And at the end of the record, man, I did my little, put my fist up in the air. They all stood there, they clapped, the audience clapped. I said, these niggas clapped. Yo. They clapped. <laughs> yeah, yo. That's what I'm saying. Like, yo, overseas, yo. They, they appreciate hip hop. When you start talking about Do the band, the DJ, the mute, like all of it, they just, they just, they can't the speak right now. English, but they know your words, bro. They know your words. They know your words. Joe Dice said, I was a motherfucker, you funny sound, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but let me tell you something. We went over there the last time we was over there, it was me and Matt Tronic, I think it was like 2018, mm. right before COVID. Okay. Yo. But I did cold getting dumb. I didn't really have to say much. He's at the whole of my Latoya didn't really have to say much. Yeah. Yeah. That, that shit kind of bugs me out. I'm like, these motherfuckers. But then I think about it. When I play certain Jamaican records, I know every goddamn word. Right. Mm-hmm. right, right. I know every word. So I know how they feel. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's, it's a good feeling. It's- it's the appreciation, though, like the appreciation for the music. Yes, like it, yes. you could, I've I've been abroad and I've seen people respond to certain records. I'm like, damn, like yo, the it's love, the artist, yeah, it's like it's yo, different, they, yeah. It's, it, it's and different. it may be what you're saying, like the fam, the fam, familiarity of growing up in the states and having the opportunity to interact with some of the artists and everything. It's like, ah, uh, you know, yeah, you, you see these cats like, every day, man. Like, yeah. motherfuckers be like, yo, yo, come on, man. I mean, you live right around the corner from me. Why would you go come? Why would you go come? <laughs> Motherfucker, look. Catch me when I go to the fucking belly. And when I'm going in there, just put my put, put my CD on. It's like I'm saying it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta, you know, <laughs> that's, how, that's how you should do it, man. Because I don't understand that. I don't I don't get that. Right. I don't get that. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna sit there and pay a bunch of money to see a motherfucker that I see every other day. Word. And if I want to hear the, the person's song, I got the internet. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, if I'm going overseas, I'm gonna make sure that when I perform, I'm gonna give them something extra. 
Right. Mm. I'm gonna give them some extra something to remember you by. You remember you by. Right? What I like to call it. What I like to call it is leaving a shit stain on the stage. <laughs> Yo, you know what? Like call it. I'm gonna tell you. You know what? You know what? And and I'll tell you this as an artist and as a consumer and a fan of music that sometimes the things that I don't appreciate though is that like being a dude that really appreciate and love hip hop when older artists come out and perform, I want to hear they shit. Like. I, I don't go bring I, no I mess stuff. with their new shit too, yeah. but I want to hear the, the classic, the original. You want to hear what? Yeah, yeah, like you want to hear them, but brought them to the table. Yeah, right. yeah. Facts, but it, you know, it be occasions where people they'll shy away from the shit, or they'll be you'll be like, "Yo, I want to, yo, let me you hear the why? shit." I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna, gonna tell you why. I'm gonna put it in a nutshell for you. They don't remember the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I'm then let me think it. Then let's uh, no, no, I'm saying they don't remember. Yeah, mm. they can't lip sync if you don't remember. <laughs> Massive crowd participation, right? Yo, yeah, yeah. I mean, you catch an artist, and they've been doing this for like 20, 30 years or whatever. See, like me, I started in 86. So what am I 30 something years now? Yeah. I make sure when I go on stage, I know every fucking lyric and I sit and I make sure my voice sounds just like the record. Clear, right? A lot of these artists. <laughs> like, Yo, I, you got my money? Yeah, okay, cool. I'm gonna do this shit real quick. <laughs> no. But yo, just that's because you you shooting in the gym. That's it should be muscle memory, right? If you yeah, well, well, I mean, I, I look at I I, I I I practice. I can't say every day, but at least every other day, I go through my show. Yeah, wow, I go through my show every other day because my show is right here on the computer. I sit right in my room, right, and I go through my show. And I don't get up and start dancing around. Like, I'm doing it right. for memory, right? Yeah. For repetition, for memory. Yeah. That's so just memory. It, you know, so that's just how it is, man. Y'all can imagine y'all performing in Berlin somewhere, and someone here before I did that. I did that. We rocked it too. And and the crowd say, "Yo, stop front and you." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they know the word. Yo, it was crazy in Berlin, right? They had these big, huge tents. I mean. You ever seen a circus tent before? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Like a whole a whole bunch of this was like twice that size. It was for All a right. concert. Because the guy, the promoter, was like, Yeah, we're performing at a tent. I was like, a fucking tent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when you and the sound system, oh my God, yo. And they yeah. sing your song. They sing your song. Like, yeah. I'm leaving. Oh, just hold the mic out. Just hold the mic out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they sing it for you. Wow. Yeah. That's yo. The other your other signature was the hat and the gold teeth. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got my the hat. hat. Like, you look the hat right there, hat. like you looked at. Is the hat right there? Yeah, that, the yeah, hat's right there in the garage. The hat's right there in the garage. Right right. the, <laughs> the hats are right there in the garage, and but nice. I keep gold teeth in my mouth. So, <laughs> but the hats are right there. I just did a commercial for um, what's it called? Uh, it's a new beer called mm. Electro Beer. Okay. okay, it's in um London. Okay, mm-hmm. and the commercial just came out, so get a chance. It's on YouTube. Okay, I'm, I'm wearing, I'm wearing, I'm wearing one of the hats in the commercial. Nice. Wow. Where were you? Where, where were you getting those hats from? Dapper there? Hell no, Dapper couldn't mm-hmm. fucking my man kick them. <laughs> okay, okay. So wait, wait, where you said you was getting them from? The name, the name of the name of the company is called Ross Roots. Okay, Ross Roots. Mm-hmm. Ross Roots. Yeah, it was down. Man. He he came out of the Coliseum on 69th in Jamaica. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the Coliseum, yeah. Where Sir Kings was back in the day. Yep. Yeah, Sir Kings, yeah. And where I got my first gold teeth from Eddie Gold Teeth. Mm. Uh, I was Eddie Gold, I was Eddie Gold Teeth's very first recording artist. That's <laughs> why on the Justicism album, I put the teeth, the caption shit up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, was, that was that was to give Eddie big up and props because then Method Man wouldn't stole my shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Oh man, just yo, I appreciate you doing this interview. I have no more questions, man. This has been one of my favorite interviews that we've ever done. Yeah, all um, right, all right, yo. But I don't know if Rob or King got other questions. Y'all got, y'all got other questions. I, I, got, I got one more. Listen, if you, if you I, I, I'm appreciative of being in the God's yeah, presence, man. Word. Yeah, man. With with all the stuff we see going on now with the with these with these young rappers and the cults and everything, do you? Do you ever think that we'll, say, we'll, we'll get back to a place where we'll say, but we get some kind of level of authenticity? That all depends, man, because like I said, rap is going to keep elevating. And in order for it to reach its pinnacle or just try to reach it, it has to go up. It can't go in a circle. 
Right. It can't go in a circle because that's just repeating the cipher. Right. It might get to a good place, but then eventually it's going to move away from that place. Right. Right. right and right, back right. to where you don't want it. So what you want to do is keep it going up. You have to keep it going up. So hopefully one day the mentality will come back to, but like that's what that goes back to what I was saying earlier. You can speak about stuff on a record that has to do with partying, but just make it sound intelligent. Yeah, you don't have to always go up there and spit a lesson. Right. Mm. You know, so if they can get the mentality right and get them, get, if they can get the formula, put it like that. Because a lot of people forgot about the formula. Mm. See, the formula was lost when gimmicks came into the action. Right. When mm. death started, when death started happening inside of a rap, not hip hop, rap. Right. Mm. When the death started and when the gimmicks started, this the, the formula for authenticity, it was lost. It's, it's been erased. See, they, they found a, how you say, <clears throat> they found a gimmick. Yeah. And a lot of people stuck with that gimmick. Yeah. And so part of that gimmick is basically not the most intelligible lyrics you'll hear, but just enough to keep you interested. Interested, yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. back to what Yada was saying, Maybe one day they will get back to that mentality. Maybe they will come together, figure out the formula to keep the people dancing, but keep them listening too. Mm. You know, maybe one day, man. You know, it's no ideas original.